Hi guys, what's going on and welcome to Shattered Obelisk. I think many of you will have already done or at least know about the first expedition at Amrayan Excavation. But you know, that is really just a very basic and relatively easy introduction to expeditions. The real fun, the real challenge starts at level 35 with Shattered Obelisk. I'm a little bit under leveled for this one actually, I'm only at level 30. But I had a really solid team around me and I could run it just fine. So you can actually get away with a couple of people being under leveled. As long as you've got a healer with you. Because you're certainly going to be needing a group healer for this one. Ideally, you're going to be bringing a tank with you as well. Because that does make life a lot easier. But you can kind of get away without one. Once you've fought through that sort of initial first couple of groups of enemies. It's a pretty self-explanatory path to go. You'll end up at the first door. Much like the Amrine excavation, you're really just getting through this as an, as an ancient Azoth seal. Use your staff on it and it will open the door and take you through to the other side. Once you get through, you'll find a few more enemies to deal with, but nothing that is overly challenging. But you're soon going to encounter the first of these shattered obelisk lasers, is what I'm going to call them. I don't know what they are. They're effectively these beams of light that if you touch them, they will kill you instantly. You can see the little circles on the wall. One's actually moving up and down here. If you stand in front of that, you will immediately die as Prof just found out to his own cost there on the other side. There should be beams of light coming across them, but they are slightly glitched out at the moment in beta. But don't worry, the danger is very much still there. You're gonna encounter these a lot, but in this case, or you can actually lie down and crawl underneath it and you can imagine like the lasers of beams of light going above your head and you can just just about get underneath it but fear not this is not the last of the lasers there's plenty more puzzling to go and only a little bit further on down the corridor you'll come to what i've nicknamed the tom cruise room because it looks like a mission impossible film yes it's like the room of many lasers that actually changed this slightly from what I was used to in Alpha so it took me a few minutes to get my head around this one because some of the uh, some of the slight cheats from Alpha didn't quite work this time around and as you can see as someone nicely demonstrated if you touch the lasers you will get yourself killed almost immediately but it's actually not too hard to get around once you're at the top immediately turn left and jump straight down onto this ledge you've then got to avoid this moving laser here which somehow I managed to get away with even though I think it really should probably have killed me then we've got the second one to avoid, same principle, just wait till it goes up, make sure you get it under it. And then you're going to jump onto this little ledge here, down at the bottom. Moving along the ledge, making sure to not fall down the hole, you can climb up under this laser bar here. There's now one more ledge to drop down onto, keeping crouched, because that laser on the other side can clip the top of your head. You can then climb up and up, and you're now basically in the middle of the room. You've got one more moving laser beam to avoid, just make sure you get it on its upcycle, and we're then onto the jumping. You've got to run and you've got to clear this, so you've got to be jumping there. And now you're basically at the far side of the room, but you've got to get to the temple on the left. So you've got to do another run and jump to take you onto the side, and then there's one last ramp to go. And you can see in the distance, everyone is at basically the central temple, and that's where you've got to get to to be able to pick up your protection charm. So you can see that there in the middle. But it means you've got to run up this ramp here, um, and then kind of make that leap. So you just got to be careful. You've got to make sure you jump off the end. Boop, and then you should be good. And from here, you can grab the protection charm from your Azoth staff. Dunk, and then that blocks the damage from the lasers. You just don't do what I'm about to do here, which is expect that everyone will be immediately behind you and walk too far forwards. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. That was most definitely my bad. You've then just got to use the staff one more time just to get everyone through this final little bit at the end. Once everyone is through, once your whole team is through, you can get onto this side and you can now cast away your Azov staff to make well, once everyone's actually got through, otherwise they won't be able to get through these laser beams here. And there we go. I can now get rid of the staff and we can carry on with the expedition. Even though you're clear of the main laser room by this point, you still have to watch out for the ones that are dotted along the walls. It is so easy just to not pay enough attention and try and accidentally run through them, particularly once you get caught into fighting. And then, yeah, well, it's still instant death, and they still more often than not catch me out. Once you get through, though, you can just keep fighting along. There's some mm, slightly more challenging sort of mini bosses once you get to some of these points. Depends probably what level you're going to be when you're tackling this. At sort of 35, I think you're probably going to be fine. 
if you've got a team that's predominantly sort of lower 30s i think you might find some of these a little bit harder really make sure you stay in your healer's healing circle focus the damage try and take out some of the bosses because they can be a little bit challenging and the damage output can be pretty high you then need to keep fighting along through the corridors until you get to your next azoth sealed door same as before press e whip out your azoth staff and start getting it unlocked once you're through the door got through the set of monsters and ancients on the other side you'll come across this bridge you'll notice that there's a couple of areas that are basically sealed off by the light beams you will be coming back to here so bear this in mind this is an important place that you will be coming back to but for now skip past it you can't get through those beams at the moment until you get your protection spell so keep on going down the other side and you'll find another group of enemies down here which you've still got to deal with just to make things really nice and confusing for you you'll now go through a third azoth door and this is in effect leading you to the final boss's antechamber but for the moment the access to the final boss is blocked and you can't actually get through there but you still need to pass this way so you can start working your way through there is a respawn shrine here and you've got more groups of enemies in which you need to deal with more of these ancients which I can assure you at level 30 I feel like my damage contribution here is not necessarily all that great compared to some of the other players in the team as you get a little bit further along, you'll come across Erebos and Limos, these two sort of mini bosses. We found these actually really a little bit challenging. I think part of the problem was we didn't have a dedicated tank who could really draw the aggro. And so as such, the healer was therefore producing by far the most threat on the team. And so not only the two bosses, but all the little minions and all the other crap that these mini bosses spawn just go straight for the healer and so therefore the healer's got too much to deal with and can't necessarily focus on the team but eventually we were able to get through them and move on to the next section this is just one area where having a dedicated tank would be really helpful once they're dealt with it's the same deal as before grab your azos staff from the protection shrine that little purple sort of square which you can always pick it up you know you need that to get through these sort of laser beams or else you'll all find yourself just getting killed straight away as before. You'll ultimately, after fighting along a bit further, find yourself on the top of this plateau. For now, there isn't actually anything specific to do, but that little tower you can see in, the, in behind me, in the centre of the screen, that is where you're going to be placing your obelisk key once you get it later on. So you need to remember this place because you're going to be coming back here and using that tower which is now directly behind me. Ultimately, you're going to find yourself back at the third Azoth door. Okay, slightly confusing, you've done basically a big loop. But you again need to use your protection as a staff to get through some of these um, laser beams, which you couldn't before. And once you've got the team to the other side, you can deal with the enemies here. Once you've got rid of the last few of them, who are still trying to aggro onto our poor healer, <laughs> we should definitely have brought a tank, then you're going to be going for the ornate chest. You can see it just over here in the corner, and this is what's going to be giving you your obelisk key. This is what we need to be putting back in that tower that I mentioned a few minutes ago earlier on in the video. But before you can actually put that key in, you need to power up the shrine. And to do that, you remember that bridge that I mentioned earlier on? You now need to go back up there with your protection shrine, get everyone through the laser beams, and now you can go and actually activate the disconnected power lock here. Turn that on. With that on, the obelisk is now activated. You can now head back round up to the obelisk and insert the key. Once you get the key actually put in, it will then move you on to the final boss. You've basically got to make your way back to that antechamber that you went through earlier through the third Azoth door. However, by this point, the third Azoth door has now been locked, so you have to go back round and go round the other way instead. As you arrive at the antechamber, there'll be a few more enemies for you to deal with. Nothing really here very challenging just got to get these guys out of the way for the doors to the actual crypt of the regent to open but once they do you're basically going to have like a 20 meter corridor and then you're going to be in on the final boss so make sure you're ready by this point make sure you've got everyone here teamed up ready to go healed up after these enemies because soon you've got the final boss to deal with as you run into the final dungeon you'll find yourself suddenly in an episode of transformers as the main boss basically spawns out of a pile of bones on the floor but bear in mind You've not got to kill this guy once, but actually twice. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenging one. 
I think initially it's not too bad. He basically just acts like a giant ancient soldier, and he basically just responds and acts in the same way. It'd be much easier if you had a tank here again, because he could just grab the aggro. But for this, we're basically just trying to get the damage in. You'll see in a minute he's going to throw a bone on the floor, and those bones act as um, like ancient nests. They spawn the ancients around them. You can see them all look piling out of the bone now. It is worth taking these out, in my opinion, particularly when the healer's the one who's getting pretty much the full aggro from everything. By taking these out, you're basically just delaying their spawn. But of course, much like Simon Gray, he will just respawn them. He will throw more bones out in the future, but it's just trying to control the numbers of enemies that are spawning. He is a pretty tanky dude, and it's going to take you a fair chunk of time to take him down. Unfortunately, we lost one of our players to a disconnection, so unfortunately we had to deal with it with a four. But just when you think you've done enough, you've got him down, got him on the floor, got him taken out. I'm afraid it is unfortunately not quite as over as you think, as he comes back for round two, but now in a nice upgraded format. He does this sort of leaping around the map and sends this sort of shockwave out. It is quite damaging and it can start to take you down, particularly if he does land on you. So you have got to be careful to be keep moving in around and avoid being the one that, well, gets flattened by a very large bone monster. Eventually, he does settle down, but this time he throws out three bones at once. So it more turns into a Dawn of the Dead series than anything else, because there's so many monsters spawning at one point. Trying to kind of vaguely keep on top of these, because they're just overwhelming our healer at this point, because he's still just collecting the aggro. Of course, this time the boss is even tankier, and he still gets his leaps in every now and then, so you really do have to be careful. Quite a few times I came pretty close to getting killed on this one. Um, it was made harder by the fact that we hadn't got the tank, as I've said a few times now, and the fact that now we're just, just a 4 rather than a 5, and I'm only 30, not 35. He does eventually start to get down, as long as you can keep yourself alive for this long. It seemed to me the key is just to make sure you stay within your healing circles. If your healer can keep the healing circle sort of pretty much vaguely on the boss, then so long as you're sort of at his toes hitting him with your melee weapons, then you're in a pretty good place to keep yourself healed up. The amount of monsters he spawns is pretty significant, and trying to avoid them is kind of a problem. Um, particularly if they all aggro against you, or in our case the healer, then it can make things pretty difficult. I just tried to put myself between um, the, the monsters and the healers a little bit to give him time to try and keep the rest of the team up in the game because a lot of the other team are pretty low. But since the boss was now getting so low, we made a little bit of a push for it, made that rush, got the damage on, and thankfully, we were able to get him down and secure victory. Interestingly for us, it seems like the ancients didn't actually really seem to despawn, which was a little bit concerning, at least at first, but they didn't seem to be doing too much damage, so it wasn't really a massive problem. And I found the way up the little stairs at the back is the final expedition chest, which you can collect. And obviously, that's going to give you your sort of final and your best drops for the match, before you can then, well in my case, slowly stagger over encumbered to the exit portal and finish the expedition. Anyway, hopefully this has been useful. If it has, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for a lot more New World content. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.